Hey guys, so today we're making a soul food dinner. I have some mustard fried fish, some mac and cheese, and some cabbage. Please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let's get started with the recipe. So we're going to start by boiling some water for our mac and cheese. And so please be sure to salt your water because this will help to flavor your noodles. So I'm just using about three-fourths of a box of elbow macaroni the the whole box is a pound and so I just use three-fourths of that and then I cooked it for maybe about six or seven minutes you don't want to overcook it because it's gonna cook in the oven and so I added a couple tablespoons of butter and then you want to season your mac and cheese guys so I am using some black pepper some Himalayan pink salt some onion powder, some uh, garlic powder, and you're gonna season this to your taste, okay? I don't care what seasonings you use, just make sure your food is not bland, cause we don't want no bland food, y'all. And so you're just gonna stir that together and then we're gonna add in our other ingredients. And so I'm using about five cups of shredded cheese. So I have some sharp cheddar, some mild cheddar, some Parmesan cheese, some Kobe Jack cheese, and then um, a little bit of mozzarella. And so you're just gonna stir all of this together and you're gonna add your milk. And I've made baked mac and cheese a few times on my channel already. And so I'm not really doing anything different. I'm just giving y'all a complete meal. And so I'm gonna use about maybe two and a half cans of evaporated milk. If you don't wanna use evaporated milk, you can use regular milk. Um, but I find it easier to just use the cans of evaporated milk. And then I'm adding in one can of cheddar cheese soup. This is optional, but I do highly encourage you to use this because it helps to keep your macaroni nice and creamy and it adds great flavor. And so you're just going to stir all of this together. And you want to um, do it till you don't want your macaroni to get dry in the oven so you add milk until it kind of makes that um that creamy sound and so you want you don't want to put too much milk but you want to put enough that it, it might look slightly liquidy but you don't want it to be dry that's the main thing you don't want it to be dry and depending on how much macaroni you're making you're going to use more or less milk and so I, again, only made like three fourths of the box and the box was a pound. And so I used about two and a half or so cans of milk. And I think the cans are 12 ounces each. And so you really kind of do it to, until the consistency is what you want it to be. And so I am just going to continue to add things until it is the consistency that I like. And then you want to make sure that you taste it to make sure that it's seasoned well enough and then I'm adding in one egg you can add in two eggs if you want your mac and cheese to be a little more firm but this is the consistency that I'm looking for and so I'm just gonna spray my uh, baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray and then I'm gonna add my mixture to the pan and then um, I reserved a little bit of the the cheese and I'm putting that on top and then you're going to sprinkle some uh, dried parsley flakes and then some I put some smoked paprika on top and then I put it in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes and then I let it sit for maybe 10 or 15 minutes before I uh, scoop some of it out. And so after about 30 minutes, this is what the mac and cheese looked like. Again, I let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes before scooping it out. Oh my goodness, it's so creamy, so cheesy. Oh my goodness, I love baked mac and cheese. And this is perfect for the holidays, y'all. It's coming up, but I made this for my Sunday dinner. So, um, but this was super delicious. Um, so next I am going to get started on the mustard fried catfish and so I am just going to season it with some Old Bay seasoning. I'm not going to put too much on there because I am using um, the Andes uh, seasoned 
uh, cornmeal uh, fry. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm using the batter, not the batter. Jeez Louise. I am using the breading that's already seasoned. But anyway, I am just squirting some yellow mustard on the fish. And so I would say I use maybe about a fourth of a cup. And so we got these uh, catfish fillets from Costco. And so six of them came in the pack. And so this is the Andy's fish breading that I was talking about. And it already has seasoning in it. So you don't want to over season your fish, guys, because we don't want it to be salty. And so I put some of the breading in a bag and then I put two fillets in at a time and I just mixed that together until all of it was nicely coated. And then I took it out of the bag, shaked off the excess and let it uh, sit on a wire rack just so that that breading could adhere to the fish. And so now I have my oil. This is some vegetable oil that I heated to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I'm only going to cook two fillets at a time. You can use a deep fryer if you want, but I decided to use my cast iron today. And so I cooked it for maybe about three minutes on each side, if that, I don't know. Um, I want to say it's about three minutes on each side, but you want your fish to be nice and crispy. You can cook it a little bit longer if you want your fish fried hard because I know some of y'all like y'all fish and y'all chicken fried hard so you can cook it until it is your desired your desired uh crispiness but you want to make sure that the internal temp is I believe it's 145 degrees Fahrenheit but this was so crispy y'all and make sure the fish is the last thing that you cooked and so I didn't cook it in the order um, that I put the video but you want to make sure that you probably cook your cabbage first because you're gonna um, put your your meat on first and so right here I am just taking the core out of my cabbage and I'm only using one head of cabbage today but you want to make sure that you take this core out because it's hard y'all you ain't gonna be able to eat that and so I am just chopping up my cabbage and I am going to um, wash it off and I'm actually going to cook this in the pressure cooker and I have never done this before um, but I thought I would try it and so I am going to use a smoked turkey wing for this recipe and so I um, did cook that first and so I'm adding in um, two bell peppers to this recipe and I'm also going to add in one yellow onion but that is totally optional if you don't want that in your cabbage you don't have to put it in there and so um, I'm also going to cook the smoked turkey wing in the pressure cooker. So um, I put that in there and then it's actually two turkey wings. It's probably too much meat for this one head of cabbage. But anyway, I put four cups of water and about two um, heaping spoonfuls of some chicken bouillon. And so I am going to cook this in my pressure cooker for 35 minutes. And it was nice and tender after the 35 minutes. You don't want to put all of like your cabbage and your meat in there at the same time because your cabbage is going to be mushy, baby. But um, I've never made this in the Instant Pot before. And I don't know that I would do it again because, um, I, you know, I just couldn't control um, how long I cooked the cabbage to a certain extent if you know what I mean and so this is the turkey after 35 minutes it is nice and tender and so now I'm going to add in my washed cabbage and so I ended up putting this in the pressure cooker for I think 14 minutes but that was way too long because my cabbage was overcooked y'all so I will not cook it that long ever again um if I do put put this in the pressure cooker again I will probably only cook it for five minutes like literally no lie y'all I would only cook this for like five minutes because it was way overcooked after 14 minutes and I thought I, I didn't think can you believe I forgot to season my cabbage mm -mm. don't forget to season your cabbage and so I'm just using one package of uh, green seasoning and I know it's actually bean seasoning but it's the same seasoning as the green seasoning don't judge me and so I'm adding in some onion powder and some garlic powder um, you can add in a little black pepper if you want to and then a little sprinkle of Italian seasoning and then I'm gonna stir this up but this is done y'all and so I'm just gonna put everything on the plate and so this is what your cabbage should look like and so 
this is the finished product you guys look at that mac and cheese that delicious cabbage it don't even look that bad in that in that frame and then i have this delicious mustard fried catfish and i forgot to cook some cornbread so you can cook some cornbread to you know sop up your your uh your cabbage but i hope you guys enjoy these recipes please make sure you like share comment and subscribe bye